Hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to today's show. Now, Cryptococcus gadii is a fungus that lives in the environment, primarily in tropical and subtropical environments of the world, but also in some temperate areas like British Columbia and some part of the United States. Uh, Cryptococcus gadii is a, causes a rare infection that people can get when they breathe the organism uh, into their lungs. Now, scientists have found that this disease also killed porpoises and dolphins in the Salish Sea. Now, there's a new study that was published in the journal Diseases of Aquatic Organisms, where researchers explore how human-caused changes on land can affect aquatic animals, specifically in the case of the fungal pathogen Cryptococcus gadii. So joining me today to discuss this topic is research assistant at the CDOC Society at the UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, and the lead author of the study, Sarah Tiemann. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the program. Hi, Robert. Thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, very interesting study, by the way. Um, but before we get into that, um, I'd like, to, like you to let the audience know a little bit more about this organism, uh, Cryptococcus gadii. Where is it found geographically? Um, what types of environment, and uh, like, what's the pathology in people and in, say, terrestrial animals? Yeah, you did a great job of giving a great background about the organism. Um, like you said, it's a fungal pathogen that mainly lives in soil and in tree dwellings, and disease is caused by inhaling the fungus through environmental exposure. And there's been a lot of previous research done on the pathology of the disease, and it's been found that for many species, for example, humans and terrestrial animals and wildlife, C. gadii primarily affects the nervous and the respiratory systems. Uh, so it's, you know, it's acquired by breathing it in and then it can disseminate throughout the body um, into the cerebrospinal fluid and other, uh, other areas throughout the body and can cause multisystemic fungemia. And it was historically found in tropical and subtropical forests um, but in the case of our study, it was found in British Columbia and in the United States' Pacific Northwest, which is what triggered CEDOC Society and our collaborators throughout these regions to study this disease in odontocetes, which is just a term meaning toothed whales, like porpoises and dolphins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, I, I, I'm familiar with, the, with this organism. However, I was not familiar that it caused disease in these aquatic animals. When was this first seen? Yeah, so doctor, uh, so for a little bit of a background, um, cryptococcosis mm -hmm. is a term for the disease caused by the species in the genus Cryptococcus. Um, so that's been recorded in cetaceans, which is a term generally for whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Uh, it's been recorded in Western Australia, Hawaii, and California, just to name a few instances. But within the extent of the outbreak in British Columbia and in Washington, uh, Dr. Garner at Northwest Zoopath identified the first case of cryptococcosis in a doll's porpoise that stranded and died near Tacoma, Washington in 1997, which was two years before the onset of the terrestrial outbreak on Vancouver Island that subsequently spread to British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest throughout the early 2000s. And, is, uh, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, just for a little bit more background about um, how this organism was found, uh, or I'm sorry, how this porpoise was found. Uh, so through agreements between marine mammal stranding networks and federal governments in the United States and in Canada, marine mammals that are found dead are collected by regional stranding networks and they undergo necropsies, which are animal autopsies um, by veterinarians and stranding teams to understand why these animals died. And so tissue samples are collected routinely from all these animals and they're sent to veterinary pathologists and microbiologists so they can survey for different diseases, which is what allowed them to identify C. gadii in this porpoise. Okay, great. Um, now is the pathology or the disease in porpoises um, and related species similar to what you see in humans and other non-terrestrial and or excuse me, terrestrial animals? That's a great question. Um, our study didn't focus too much or specifically on the pathology of the disease uh, in odontocetes, but that's a great launching pad for future research. Yeah. And it's likely that odontocetes acquire the disease through the same mechanisms as people in terrestrial animals would by inhaling the fungal spores or yeasts. Okay. So perhaps the most fascinating thing about this to me is 
how the porpoise would contract this fungus out at sea. <laughs> all right. They got so they got to be pretty close to land, I imagine. So how does that all work? Yeah. So there were studies that were done by Kidd et al. and Duncan et al. Um, and if you look in our paper, you'll find those cited in there uh, that found that it's likely that human caused activities on land that can disrupt soil like construction or logging could actually aerosolize the fungal spores and cause them to be inhaled by people and animals, which is how infection starts. And it's possible that after the spores in the yeast become aerosolized, they settled on the sea surface micro layer and odonocetes acquired the disease when they surfaced to breathe. Uh, so odonocetes have explosive exhalation followed by rapid inhalation and they take in a large tidal volume of air each time that they breathe. And so it's possible that that could have contributed to how they were um, acquiring the fungus that settled on the sea surface. Now, um, so clearly this is because of uh, our um, messing with the environment up there. Otherwise that yeast won't get out to the sea, right? I mean, that, is that pretty clear? Yeah, um, so we used advanced statistical methods uh, to understand where odonocetes that died from C. gadii were most likely to be found. And so these methods, um, they're pretty cool because when, when you're dealing with marine mammal strandings, these are animals that generally have large, uh, moderate to large home ranges. Um, they can die and never be found. They can sink to the bottom of the sea. They can float elsewhere. Um, but we found the majority of strandings uh, of odonocetes that died from this disease occurred near terrestrial hotspots that were identified by Kidd et al. as having positive isolates of C. gadii in the environment, uh, uh, positive cases in people, in terrestrial animals, in soil, air, seawater, and freshwater, um, largely around Southeast Vancouver Island in the early 2000s. So even though this disease originated on land, it was still able to spill over into the marine environment, which is pretty frightening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I guess the big question is, your research, why is this, why is this important? Yeah, so if we didn't do disease surveillance of marine mammals, we would have never known that marine mammals can be sentinels for human health. And knowing that cryptococcosis occurred in a doll's porpoise two years before the first human case just confirms something that we already knew, which is studying marine mammals is good for the environment and it's good for people. And this ties into the One Health Initiative that recognizes that the health of people and animals and the environment and wildlife are all connected. And what we do on land can clearly affect the health of marine organisms too. And I don't mean to be melodramatic, but it's, it's heartbreaking to think that uh, this disease is not only affecting people and, and pets and terrestrial wildlife, but also porpoises and dolphins that face a whole bunch of threats apart from this disease. So it's pretty important in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's very interesting. I'm, and I'm, I'm sure very few people even realize this. Uh, you know, first, they don't probably know the fungus well. And then then this particular factoid, I've been around microbiology a long time. This is the first I heard of it when I read your paper. Um and uh, any final thoughts on your research, Sarah? Yeah, um, I just want to say that this study was particularly remarkable because of its collaboration between 15 different co-authors and 12 different institutions. Um, and these are the people that did the real hard work over the past 20 plus years in uh, identifying this disease in adonocetes um, from the stranding networks that responded to the dead marine mammals um, to the veterinarians that led the necropsies and the pathologists and the microbiologists that identified C. gadii in the tissues. This study took a huge team of scientists, one that was transboundary between the United States and Canada, to help understand this disease over time. And it just goes to show the importance of collaboration in science and, and what working with different organizations and partnerships can really help achieve. Because we're all working for the same goal, which is to protect the health of the Salish Sea. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Um, and I... I would be uh, negligent if I let you go without you get, getting a chance to talk about the CDOC Society. Go ahead. Yeah, so the CDOC Society is a uh, program of the UC Davis Karen C. Dreyer Wildlife Health Center, which is a mouthful. Um, and our mission is to ensure the health of marine wildlife and their ecosystems through science and education. So not only do we do research studies like this one, but we also fund other organizations to do their own research studies 
Um, and it's part of this collaborative transboundary effort that we're able to help preserve the Salish Sea. And if you're interested in learning more about CDOC, our science and education, including our um, amazing uh, elementary school curriculum called Junior Sea Doctors, um, and the other projects that we funded, you can visit www.cdocsociety.org. And if you look up CDOC Society on YouTube, uh, or I'm sorry, Salish Sea Wild on YouTube, you'll see um, some of the incredible videos that we have by our science director, Dr. Joe Gatos, and uh, all of his adventures in the Salish Sea and helping to protect its wildlife. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. I checked out the website earlier. I really enjoyed it. And um, for the audience, if you are interested in checking out the study, I will link to it in the show notes. And let me get the, bring up the title real quick. Epizootology of Cryptococcus gadii Outbreak in Porpoises and Dolphins from the Salish Sea that's published in the Diseases of Aquatic Organisms. And my guest today was Sarah Tiemann. And I thank you, Sarah, for sharing your time and your expertise. Very interesting stuff. And congratulations on the study. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for letting me talk about this uh, important study and why it's uh, all of its implications for the health of marine animals in the Salish Sea. Really appreciate it. No, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks.